Okay, hello, this is Shannon again. This is my third video on using one of our little uh, bookmark slash bracelet looms. I only have two looms myself, so I'm using this little prototype loom for another project we have coming up, which is so cute, um, to show you how to change yarn when you run out. Because as I said in the last video, I really only recommend cutting a two to three yard piece at a time just because it's that's manageable and anything more than that feels unmanageable to me your mileage may vary um so you are going to have to add new yarn as you work on your piece even a piece this small um so i am just about ready to um change you know to add some new yarn and so what I do is I start my row and I go about two thirds of the way through it and I pull my yarn through. So about two thirds of the way through it, I pull my yarn through and then I let the tail, I let the tail hang to the back and it doesn't have to be a super long tail. Um, and then I get my new strand of yarn and get my needle um, threaded. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in the same exact way. So I'm going to go in starting the row the exact same way, do, going the exact same, following the exact same weave that I did before. So. On that last one, I had gone under, over, under, over. I'm going to do the same thing with this, with the new strand, under, over, under, over. And I'm going to go all the way across the piece. So I'll go all the way across the piece. I'm going to pull my yarn through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the tail this tail to the back about a third of the way over. It, does, it's, it doesn't have to be exact. The main thing is that you want them to be overlapping by a few stitches. I think I just use this to push. I push it to the back and then I can go ahead and pull it through like this. So I have my original strand and it's going about two thirds of the way over and then going to the back. Then I have my new yarn and it only is going for the last about two thirds or so. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna grab my little comb and I'm gonna beat it down. And so you can see that there are two strands running together for part of it. Once you do a couple more rows, you won't even be able to tell. And you see that I've done this before too and you can see the little tails hanging here. So with this little loom, I like to turn it upside down when I do my return rows, but again, whatever is most comfortable for you. And I'll be doing some videos with this little loom too when, um, when we do debut it, but I pull my next row through Make my little bubble and beat down the row and then you can barely even tell and as you keep working you won't be able to tell that there are two strands running together when you're finished you can just snip really close to the back I like to, I'm not going to snip those ones yet just because I only have one row, but I snip those ones and then you're done. The only things you'll have to weave in for a one color piece are your beginning strand and your end strand. So, yeah. So that is how you add a new yarn when you're doing one piece and how you deal with the ends. <clears throat> now, if you're doing striping, it's up to you. If you do that with striping, then you're not gonna have exact same width stripes because you will have a stripe starting 
in the middle of a row and ending in the middle of a row. So some people don't like that. And if you want a very specific look of something with very specific striping, that's probably not for you. You probably just want to start at the ends of the piece and then you're going to have to weave the ends in at the end. Um, and if you're doing anything like patterning like this, same thing, you're just going to have to weave the ends in, which isn't a big deal. Um, you just feed the ends up through part of your weft at the end and then snip it. Um, so fairly easy to do, but yep, that's how you do. You add a new color. Yay.